um, let's let's just get a sense of what it felt for you because I, I remember we, we we covered you when you're preparing for the Olympics. Are mm. uh, you qualified? Um, when they called you aside after your your second sample and you realized that something was wrong, what was going on through your mind at that particular point? Well, at that time, it was a shock. Whatever that was going on, because in the room we were like we were four people, but eventually I just felt something told me like, hey, just read read your email. So kuingia kuangalia email na nika find that nika wana kitu ima nikuwa in red and in caps that have been suspended. So at that time, of course, you know anything kusema. And um, nika ulizwa if I did it intentionally and if if not, you can always, you can test sample B. But I told them, in fact, first of all, I don't know what was being found. In fact, the compound that was ilikuwa mipatikana, the metasterone, I'm not even familiar with. Yeah. And when when that was happening, because uh, mm -hmm. I know you've done a, a sample before mm -hmm. the Olympics, about forty plus days before. Because mm. I know the rules are it should be twenty days. That's when they should give you the actual findings from the sample that you've taken. Mm -hmm. What did you feel like? Me, I'm, me, I'm okay. Like, yeah, actually, I went to the Olympics when I was in good shape, and Nilikwana Jua, like, I'm going for it, and. Um, I knew that since, you know, back in your mind, you were like, you've never failed a test before, so that one can't cross your mind. And every sample that it's been collected, I always pray about it. I always pray about it, Kamisa. And can I just say that for athletes, um, you don't have an opportunity to know whether or not your sample mm. is positive until you're told. Mm. So you might as well just assume that I'm okay up until the moment that I am notified that. Yeah something is isn't that wrong. isn't that slightly risky you know it's, it's almost like a state of abeyance because mm. you can imagine you've done a test for something and mm -hmm. obviously you'd want to obviously everyone would want to be for it to turn out you not having something uh, that has been uh, banned mm. but now you continue your life and then this comes up isn't there isn't that something that could be perhaps be um, in terms of even in terms of trying to improve on is that something can be done? Because I, I, I can understand to some extent. Yeah, in, in that 55-page ruling, they mm -hmm. say an athlete is up, presumes they are innocent mm -hmm. until they get a, a, an, an email or notification saying mm -hmm. there is an, an, an adverse analytical finding. Mm -hmm. So I guess the argument is, you, so, so long as you've done your test and you're going on with life, you continue as normal. Mm -hmm. Then if we find that there's something then we stop. Because you can imagine how many tests they do every day. So I'm wondering, how would they have, and the turnaround. So they, they are, yes. it's probably easier and smoother. Mm -hmm. You continue, you're okay. If you're not okay, we let you know. So some of the questions you're asking are pertinent issues that we also raised. Especially mm -hmm. with the first sample which was taken from Nairobi, yeah. 40 days before um, notice. And uh, I think two or three weeks before the Olympics. Mm that should have come out earlier than the sample which came out during the Olympics. In fact, it's the international standards for testing in laboratories yeah. which says you need to have 20 days between test and reporting of the analysis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That did not happen in this case. So you find, it's not just Mark, there's so many other Kenyan athletes who are pulled out of competition literally. Yeah, mm -hmm. Lawrence Chorono is perfect correct, example. Mm -hmm. for, for samples which were taken long, 20 days before, before even those 20 days are up. So that's an issue of anti-doping authorities tightening what they're doing with the labs because you have to ask yourself, why is it these labs are not giving the turnaround within the time period that they are supposed to be giving? In which case, Mark would not have gone through the entire embarrassment of having been um, taken through what he had to go through at the Tokyo Olympics. Mark, what happens? How does it feel when you move from being a national hero who everyone is saying, fantastic young man, qualified for the Olympics with borrowed spikes, and now he's here realizing his dream to he doped? How was that switch? Like, how does your life change? Um, to be honest, I had so many questions because I was like, wh why, why happened now? Because um, reaching at the Olympics was one of my dreams and and our, our main goal was to reach at the finals and really that turn around really happened that I failed a test from being <laughs> somebody to nobody but I just had to question the Lord like why now hmm. Hmm. and the treatment that hmm. you get because all of a sudden you're a pariah you can't talk to anyone mm -hmm. you can't deal with anything to do with the team it's you have to go home yeah, yeah. Um, eventually, first of all, I felt embarrassed, number one, 
and um, during the camp actually nilikuwa nakuleta at 3 am because siko nataka kupatana na watu because when you're walking and as a cover think and I'll be like how are people thinking about me umse anasema nini vitu kama hizo so eventually the treatment was quite it was silent because the questions that kila mtu alikuwa nayo na pia mimi najiuliza ikitupi imetoka wapi